Oi. You alright? How are you? Yeah, not bad. Oh. Sunday best. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was out with uh, Victoria earlier, so, you know. Right. I had to dress up a little bit, you know. Doing what? Uh, well, she wanted to go shopping. Uh, Oxford Street. Right. I mean, she wanted to go to Bond Street, but I can't afford that. No. So we went, uh, well, window shopping is the, what we were actually doing. Right, not shopping. Right, exactly. Exactly. Not yeah. shopping for things neither of you can afford. Right, yeah, well, it was a lot of uh, her looking in the windows, sort yeah. of. Uh, looking at stuff she wanted to buy that I can't afford. Looking at the dress, giving you the side eye, yeah. No, right, yeah. How was uh, how's work? You just get off, did you? Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's it's kitchen work, but they they said you might be they, we might need you to do um, waiting duties. Oh yeah. Are you getting, getting a bit cold? Well, it's a bit bit nippy, isn't it? But no, go on. Yeah. Well, we'll so as as the kitchen, what sort yeah. of, what sort of uh, you know, is it sort of like French cuisine or something? Or is it no, it's a chippy. Chippy. Yeah. The thing is that they they said you've got to be prepared to go on the floor and do waiting so that you've got oh, to have I good see. clothes, nice clothes. And they wanted me to get black shoes because they said, oh, you can't wear them. I, I was stupidly, I wanted to ask something in the interview so they thought, you know, a bit of back and forth. So I said, oh, what sort of clothes do you want me to wear? And they said, well, as a matter of fact, them shoes you've got on, don't wear them, wear some black shoes. So I had to get some black shoes. So it's so far cost me more than it's paid me. Do you want to go, go into yeah, it? Yeah, I'll reckon yeah. go inside, it's, yeah. Yours? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I think there's Dad in. No, I think Dad's out at uh, the pub tonight, so I reckon we can probably yeah. have a front room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Blimey, it's cold out there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Things have gone all numb. Yeah, I, I've been working in the kitchen all day, <coughs> so I'm not used to. No. No, no baggy left. Uh, probably just as well, because. Uh, why? Well, uh, before you show us up, I was got through about three fags. Just there? Yeah, just outside, just there. Why is that? Oh, grim day at work. Didn't want to sit inside? Well, I, I was on my way back, you know, I got on the bus. Yeah. And uh, the bus only went and stopped two stops too early from the house. Oh, right. So I thought, you know, walk back through the park. Nice, yeah. I mean, stroll, you know, a nice evening walk or something. Get a bit of a walk in. <coughs> um, uh, yeah, well, it's just a bit of a miserable day at work. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, uh, you know, you, you know, I was sort of uh, working on the assembly line. Mm. So that's sort of uh, putting all the car parts together and that. And. Uh, Today I, guess I was going a little bit slowly. I was sort of going behind everyone else. So, uh, so uh, the line manager comes up and he sort of says, uh, "Hurry up, or I'm going to have to let you go." What? Let you go? Yeah. Oh, for sake. That's really that's harsh. That. Well, the thing is, I, I've been working here about a year. So you're trained up yeah, as well. well. I mean, I probably could do his job better than he can, you know. I should say. Thing. You could certainly do your job better than he, he can. Uh, or better than some new run coming in can. Yes, I well, I bet for a minute there, I'll sort of, you know, get him, get him ready to... to uh, to show him what for. Yeah, getting ready to thump him or something. I was sort of <laughs> thinking, uh, what's your game, mate? Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, I'd, I'd get kicked off a lot if I did that. So, you know? Well, you'd get kicked off with well, it's one of those dignity. Things, one of those things where in the, in the moment you're sort of a bit heated. Did you say anything? 
Uh, no, I'll, I'll put, put my head down, go back to work. That's all yeah. I could do, really. That's it. Yeah, it was, uh, so it's my, not... My granddad used to say, there's no use being right if you're under a bus. <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's all yeah. well and good he deserved, you know, to be told, you know, where to go. Well, but the thing is, he's not even the foreman. No. He's not even running the factory and he's, at, you know... Ideas above his station. Right, you know I mean? right. You know what I mean? Is he one of one of them that sort of talks like a ponce kind of thing? Oh, he, sort of. he's... Yeah, he's... Uh, well, he's not too bad, but the, um, the foreman... He's the right character. Yeah. Have I told you about him before? I don't know. He's a uh, well. He's he's a he's a bit old for the job, really. Oh, I mean. the bald bald bloke. No, no, bald bloke is uh, Barry. Is the bloke I work oh, right. next to. I'm talking about the the boss. Right. The manager of the factory. Uh, he's very sort of. Uh, get back to your get back to your stations. Get back to you know, get back to I work. I remember there's this one time, <laughs> uh, absolutely classic where. Barry, I was, I was yeah. talking about. He, uh, it was in the uh, having lunch break, and the um, the foreman's in there having a sort of ham sandwich, right? Ham sandwich in his water, and uh, Barry comes up to him and nicks half a sandwich off, his, off a plate in front of him. Goes, Bring that back here. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bring back the ham like sandwich. A- yeah, I've known I've known he was people. Running off down the, down the uh, it's sort of just in at the second anything happens, it's like what are you doing? Yeah, he does a lot of challenge. I mean, he he came that close to letting letting Barry go and walk home at the end of that day. But he, someone that well trained, and he. Well, yeah, right. cannon. What can you do? Trigger happy. Not right. By the sound of it. Uh, yeah. So, kitchen job's not going. It, it, How yeah. long do you think you'll stay on there for? I don't know. Not not a year. It's not a chippy. It's more of a calf. But okay. when I come in, they yeah. s- in in the interview they say, "Well, it's ki- you. It's kitchen work, but you'll have to do sort of. You might have to do waiting work because there's not you know enough waiters and that. So well, I thought that was more of a more of a bird job, wasn't it? Well, I mean, I'm surprised they have you in the kitchen coming out, waiting the tables. I thought they want something well, really nice to look at. They, pref- well, what are you saying? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not against you, mate. I'm no, not no, no, I know, I know. But it, well, I, I don't think I'm going to do it. I just think they, they, they were saying I'll oh, bring nice clothes, you know. So I bought, I borrowed this off Johnny. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay there about two weeks sort of work out whether they're actually going to need me on waiting tables and that and then I'll get one myself if, if they ask me to do it once but but it, you know it don't look like they're going to ask me to do it so it's sort of, you know wasn't you uh what were you in a flower shop or something no I never no 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 that was Johnny that was oh, yeah. yeah that might be why he bought this come to think of it yeah no Victoria's been giving me an earful lately. Oh yeah. Well, it's going, it's going all right, and everything is just. Uh, she's always wanting to buy a new necklace or right, a new dress, and it's all you know. I do the best I can, but I've got you know. By the time I pay my mum and dad, uh, what keep? Yeah, I've barely got couple bob to be named yeah I heard your mum the other day oh yeah before you come out with me she was pestering you about oh when are you getting when are you going to get married oh she's been going on about that yeah since the day <laughs> well, that's the thing I mean I've only me and Vic, I've only been seeing Victoria how long has it been almost two years actually yeah you started well, stepping out Christmas sort of two years ago no we you? should we, well, we probably should start thinking about it it's just the money I don't know how how we can afford it? Because I mean, I can't no. afford to move out. Well, at the moment, I think living round here it's difficult. I yeah. think if we were, was to live a bit further away from the centre, yeah, yeah, I could afford, you know. Well, but then what are you what are you going to do for work? 
Well, and then you can't, if you can't get work, you can't afford. That's it. And she ought to understand that, your mum. Well, that's what mums are like, isn't it? Yeah. I'm surprised, that's all. Because she, she, she goes on about, oh, when we were, when we were brought up, we had no, we had nothing, you know. When we were brought up, we didn't have a penny to our name. We, <laughs> we had to scrape the sludge off the floor. <laughs> and she... Oh, we had to eat, 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 uh, eat out of the gutter. Or <laughs> That's all, all the food we could scrounge out of the gutter. Once my, my dad told, uh, he, he does that, and he told me a lie too far. Something, I can't remember what it was. It was something like, oh, we had to eat the leaves off the... We had to eat the leaves off the pavement. You're joking. Well, I said to him, come on now. And then he sort of went, all right. Funny thing is, whenever we have uh, a grandfather around, right. he's always going on about, to my dad, he's always going on about when, when we was younger, you know, we didn't have it so easy... And I think probably his father was doing the yeah, same thing. Yeah, say so, yeah. And then your dad's sitting there, all right, father. Yeah, all she right. will ever, ever get to the point where we're... I should think, when we're, when we're 40, I should think it will snap. Yeah, and all of a sudden we'll turn into our dad. We just start sort of wriggling <clears throat> up, turning our yeah. hair just all of a grey sudden. overnight. Here, I saw this uh, really super new car on the block the other week. What, your block? Yeah, I, I don't know who, whose it belongs to. It's uh, one of them sort of American sports cars. Right. And I don't know who's, who's driving that sort of thing. No, I was going to say around area. here. Well, I reckon what it is, I, I reckon it's one of these boats who lives out in sort of Surrey or something. He's got like a nice house out in Surrey like and he'd a, yeah. probably come in to visit his, his old mum or something like that. Right. No, but I, I wouldn't mind getting, you know. No, it's a sort of, you know, it's one of those sort of things. Yeah. You know, James Bond speeding down the sort of Swiss, yeah. Swiss uh, motorway. No, I mean, I can't even... I think at this point I've got this, we, you know, I don't know about you, I've got, got to decide, do I want to buy... A car would want to buy a house. That's it, yeah. Well, I mean, you could get a proper nasty car. Well, yeah, I mean... Wait a year or two to try and get an house. Harry's mate, uh, Eric, I think he's called. I've only met him once or twice. Right. He... <laughs> it's quite funny, really, because he's... His, uh, his mum had this old, old banger right. back in the 30s or something. And uh, she sort of is very uh, insistent that he ca- carry on the legacy of this old banger. Right. So he's driving a back. We, this one time we go to meet up down the uh, uh, down the oak. Right. I think it football was on or something. Yeah, we were standing outside waiting f- for uh, Eric to turn up, and this sort of. Uh, Sort of old, 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 old uh, great Gatsby car <laughs> down the road. Or... Um. Well, I think my my dad for the last five years has been talking about. Oh, I'll get my, I'll build myself up, and I'll get a good car, and then I'll you can have this. And I'm thinking to myself, you got that car in nineteen, nineteen thirty six, something, something like that. I'm thinking to myself. I don't want it. Rather not have a car than have that, you know what I mean? But, no, I don't think I work here. Very well, long. I have to come visit. I have to come and order a you know, bake, bake and butty or something. La- <laughs> large fish and chip, no. It, well, well, you, I don't know if you'd see me, to be honest. Slaving away in the kitchen, no? Yeah. You can sort of see through the door. If you if you sort of stand in the right place, sit in the right. There's this one table. If you if you sort of look at the if you sit in the right seat, you can see me. at sort of my end of the kitchen, slaving away in my posh 
get up. But it just makes you sort of wears you down, you know. That's the thinking, working world, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. I think that's what my dad was saying. At a certain point, you, uh, you sort of get used to it. Yeah. And it's just another day. Yeah. And that sort of thing. Well, we didn't know how good we had it in school, I think. Because in school, at least, it's something different every well, the problem is I, every half an hour or whatever. The problem is, I, I was bunking off school half the time. You know what I was. I like. remember. I remember. Yeah. But uh, no, I do. You know, I do miss the teachers a bit. I don't miss the. I, don't know uh, if I miss the teachers. I don't miss the cane. I'll say that. No. Much. Well, well, well. Wait till if the foreman starts caning you then. I think well, <laughs> I think you <laughs> well, saved that probably missing <laughs> <laughs> Should say so. The sound of him actually. He's one of those types, yeah. I think my dad's finished uh, watching the news before we go downstairs now. Yeah, can do. <coughs> Um, sorry if I'm not in focus. Hello, this is part two of a project that me and my friend Tom started two or three months ago, and the, pro the aim of the project is to create a genuinely naturalistic conversation from the mid-60s from southeastern England, and originally we were thinking of somewhere in the kind of um, Surrey area, which is where we live, um, but we've changed the geographic focus to maybe somewhere around sort of Sidcup or Bexley Heath, because a lot of people pointed out rightly that... Um, the traditional dialects of Surrey and Essex and places like that were still going fairly strong in the mid-60s, whereas they've now almost kind of disappeared, at least in, in urban centres. So we went for somewhere where the kind of speech we were going for might be a bit more natural. And we got far more comments than we expected from people who remember the mid-60s, um, which were extremely helpful, and we're sorry that we can't go over all of them here. Um, but I thought I'd just go over a selection of them, um, because I, I think they're quite interesting and I'd really encourage people to um, click the link in the description to that video and read through the comments if they're interested in this kind of thing as well. So in no particular order, an account called Chip Cobb, I'm looking at my phone, that's why I'm looking down, so, sorry if that's um, not, not very engaging, but an account called Chip Cobb mentions spinning conversations where people would describe conversations in terms of, like, he turned round and said... And then I turned round and said this. And that kind of reminds me of something from Derek and Clive sketches, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore um, sketches, where it, not so much the spinning metaphor, but they'd say things like, he come back with this and I come back with this. Um, so that, that sort of, that way of framing a conversation when you're re recounting a conversation to someone. Um, so I thought that was interesting. An account called Sawn George makes the interesting point that the plural of pound was often just pound in situations where you were saying, like, it costs three pound. Um, and that's that's similar. I think usage of that is similar among people my age nowadays. So you'd be more likely to say um, it costs three pound than it costs three pounds. Um, although, having said that, Mark Brierley said the opposite, so he said that if they did use pound, then they'd normally pluralise it, um, but that often quid was used instead of pound. And that money terminology thing is something that a lot of people pointed out. Um, they pointed out there was a lot of slang for pre-decimalisation uh, pre money, so like Tanner and Bob and things like that. Um, Thomas Evans... Uh, said that he was 70, uh, he's 78 now, or when he watched the video, and he said that we captured the time well, but uh, again, that quid was more likely than pound, and he said that a couple of bob was a way of expressing that you didn't have much money, um, and Birchall, uh, Tom, incorporated that into this, this uh, recording at one point. Um, John Green was 20 in 1965, and he pointed out that if somebody used an educated-sounding word... Um, then it would be pounced on and mocked. And I think that a lot of people pointed out that I used a few words which a working class person probably wouldn't use, like initiate and um, specification and stuff like that. And also that my accent in general was a bit bit too RP or it sounded a bit too put on, whereas Tom, Tom's was more accurate. 
Um, so I've I've gone for um, I've gone gone in on the accent a little bit more this time, but I'm sorry if it's still not quite there. Um, and uh, a thing we did that kind of lines up with John Green's comment is that we kind of took the piss out of people that were sort of older and spoke in a posher way than us. Um, so, for example, our parents or uh, the foreman. Um, there were a couple of times that we kind of took the piss out of them um, and the way they spoke. Another thing John Green said was that working age people who still lived at home would pay their parents board. And another commenter said that they pay their parents keep. And we ended up using the word keep um, here. And then John Green said yet another thing, it was a very good comprehensive comment, um, said that the relationship dialogue didn't ring true. And this is something that quite a lot of people said, that two men probably wouldn't be talking about their relationships with women in, in that kind of open way. Um, and that they, they maybe wouldn't speak as respectfully about women um, and that, um, in interestingly, this we we only read this part of the comment after we'd recorded the this this second part, um, but it ended up lining up quite well with what we did. So he says that if you were with a girl for two years, then it would get you teased for wedding wedding bells kind of thing, um, and indeed, Tom said that he'd been with Victoria for two years and that his mother was pestering him about getting married so that that fell together quite well um in terms of appearance a few people said that we were we were sort of scruffy by mid-60s standards we probably wouldn't have beards or long hair at that point um and i i um i suppose i have a, a point of evidence for that as well which is that my grandmother who who's about the age these people would have been doesn't like beards at all um criticizes anyone in the family who grows a beard um so that that i completely believe and the fact that my hair is too long i completely believe um we on balance i think preferred not to change our appearance that much for the for the sake of a 10 minute video um but we understand if that makes it anachronistic and sorry if that kind of ruins the immersion a little bit although hopefully it's not too far off hopefully um it's, it's it doesn't break it too much an account uh, called Bobby's all right said that the word basically started being used more um, so, oh no sorry he, he says that basically appeared in the early 1960s as a thing that people would say comically to sort of let people know not to take what they said too seriously so that's an that's an interesting one I, I wonder if that's because it was seen as a a pretentious word so you start a sentence with basically to to sort of let people know I'm, I'm putting on a bit of a posh kind of um, you know putting it on a bit kind of thing um, another thing about speech is that Lucy 83060 says that starting a conversation with so is more recent and back then so would more likely just be used as an alternative to therefore um, so, well, like like I was just about to do there. So we've tried to um, tried to reduce that in this conversation. Although I think there are a couple of times where it was too hard to edit it, edit it out because it it was sort of too embedded in the flow of speech. Um, so it slips through a couple of times. Um, Anne Ellershaw was born in Manchester, but she says that she lived in the south for most of her adult life. And she gave some good advice on pricings, which a few other people gave as well. So she says until the early 60s, she'd never spent more than five quid on a coat uh, or sort of three to five quid for shoes. Um, and a lot of people criticised the pricing of the shoes. So in the original one, we just um, uh, we just sort of plugged numbers into an online calculator and tried to get something that was too expensive, but not too, too expensive. Um, and clearly we, we, we missed the mark. Um, so... I think we were kind of relying on people's comments to tell us whether the shoe prices were accurate. Um, so thank you to everyone who, who advised us on that. Um, the whole premise of the, the shoe thing, a lot of people said, was a bit off because, for one thing, a, a, a workplace like that would never tell you to um, get a specific make of shoes. And they, they pointed out that make, you'd refer to a make of shoes rather than a brand of shoes. 
Um, so we we reduced the shoe thing because the premise of it seems seems like it was a bit off. Um, somebody who I think is, their name is pronounced Kieran pointed out that Tom would have had conversations about pay rises uh, with his union rep and not his foreman. So we left out a, a lot of the pay stuff. Um, an interesting thing that this person said, and if I try to pronounce their name, I'm worried I'll get it wrong, uh, but they say that um, shoes were priced in shillings even if they were worth more than a pound, which is probably something obvious to people alive at the time that I, I didn't know myself. So they give the example of shoes maybe being 79 and 11, which I would have assumed was worded £3.19 and 11, but apparently you'd actually give that amount in shillings rather than pounds, so that's an interesting, interesting fact. Um, a few people said that they don't remember the F word being thrown around that much in casual conversation. Um, so I think we, I don't think we use it in this recording, although I, we might have let it slip through once. Um, so that's people like Michael Newton and Mark Robbins. Um, and also an account called Lynn Loves Roses agrees that, that she, she didn't really hear people using the F word very much. Um, she also said that she never knew anyone who rolled their own cigarettes. And this is a contentious point because I I have relatives of that age who, who said most people rolled their own cigarettes and either they'd use a roach or, um, or no filter at all and they just have paper and tobacco. On the other hand, there are people in the comments who said that they never saw roll-up cigarettes and even people who didn't have much money bought pre-rolled ones. So we ended up using um, roll-ups because that's sort of we between us well i i had some papers from a friend and i had some tobacco in a tin and i didn't want to buy a pack of pre-rolled cigarettes so, so we just used that on the basis that some people had said it was accurate so at least in some areas it must have been happening um a couple of people um including that lynn loves roses account um said that jobs were quite easy to come by so discussions about difficulty finding jobs might be less accurate um, and I think the only time we mention it in the in, in this recording was um, in reference to if you were living further from the centre then you might have a harder time finding a job so maybe even that's not accurate um, but yeah it's interesting apparently jobs were much much easier to come by um, what else A counterpoint to the not much swearing thing is that Steve Bray says that our recording didn't have as much swearing as he would expect. So clearly in some circles people were swearing a bit more. And uh, finally, um, we were wondering about whether to use the word yeah as an alternative to yes. And different people commented different things on this, but something that popped up a few times was that people didn't say yeah, um, or people sort of after their mid-twenties didn't say yeah with the, the long air sound that I use, so I use the same vowel as I'd use in air or squared, but they said yes with the short eh, but in a way that kind of reduced or omitted the s from the end. So me and Tom tried at the start to go more with yeah than yeah, um, although I think that this is probably the thing we did um, most sloppily on because it, it's um, there are quite a lot of times through the video where I think maybe we say the air sound for a bit too long. Um, yeah. And I think that's pretty much most of the feedback I was going to go over. One account called G Yorkshire pointed out that it would be very strange for someone to go and ask their boss for more money than their mates were making. So whether that would show a sort of lack of camaraderie or, or something like that. Um, and also that you'd go through a shop steward rather than asking management yourself. So that lines up with something other people have said. So, um, yeah, we, we ended up changing quite a lot of the topics um, because the the basis of the topics was 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 faulty um but other than that hopefully um any mistakes we have made in this one people people kindly point them out and 
yeah, we will we'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much for all your help, and hopefully this is at least more accurate than the last one. <laughs>